going to discuss uh, corner kicks and we're going to talk about our strategy in the 7v7 realm, uh, especially a new 7v7 team. So uh, the team that, I, that I'm coaching 7v7 uh, this season is actually U8 playing up. So they've, they've never played 7v7 before. So we make our corners really simple. Um, and this is how we're going to do it for at least um, most of the season, if not all of the season. Uh, perhaps uh, in the spring, we will um, make it a little more complicated. But um, first of all, just wanted to say that um, when a corner happens um, is when the ball goes out of the goal line and it was last touched by our opponents. So that is when we do corner kicks. Now there's two corners, um, as you can see here, one at the top of the screen, one at the bottom. If the ball goes out on this side of the goal, uh, it crosses the goal line on this side, the corner's here. If it crosses the goal line on this side of the goal, uh, on the top of your frame here, the ball will uh, get placed on this corner. So I'm gonna go ahead and just um, roll this out. Now just a quick reminder, our shape, we have um, our goalkeeper, our two center backs, we have our three midfielders, meaning we have our two outside midfielders, our central midfielder, and then we have our striker. So this is our 7v7 shape, as you all know. So the ball is played out, and you will see that it has gone out of this goal line. So the first question is who will be taking our corner kicks? And there's only two positions on the field that will be taking the corner kicks. And it's, it's real easy because it's the same two people, or the same two positions, I, I should say, that are taking uh, our throw-ins. And that will be our two outside midfielders. Now, which outside midfielder takes the corner will be based on which corner it's out. So in this situation, the ball has gone out on the goal line to the bottom of your screen here. So the corner will be taken um, on, on this, this corner, meaning that the two, the um, outside midfielder um, or fullback, uh, depending on how, how you want to term it, um, will be taking that kick. If it was up here, if the ball had gone out this goal line, then the three would come up here and take it. So let's go ahead and move our two down, ready to take the corner kick. All right, so the outside midfielder on the side of the corner is the one who's actually gonna take it. Now, what are we gonna do with everybody else? So our central midfielder will always come up and stand right next to the two for what we call a short corner. And as we get started, we are going to be doing almost exclusively short corners. And this is actually for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, at our age, um, a lot of uh, us can't actually play a ball um, this far into the box. That would actually be playable. Um, but, but also, um, I want to start like this because then we can sort of build on from there. And so I'm going to talk about um, our short corners, which is going to be the majority of our corners. And then I'm going to talk about a situation when they're not going to be a short corner. So uh, that's so the central midfielder comes and stands right next to uh, whoever's taking the corner. If it was up here, the six would come up here and stand next to the three. So the three, or the, I'm sorry, the outside midfielder and the striker, or I'm sorry, the, the outside midfielder on the opposite side of the corner and the striker will come and stand right here in the corner, the opposite corner of the 18-yard box. I'm going to play that out for you here. So you can see they're, they're standing next to each other. Um, it, it, it could be a little bit more central. It could be a little bit more wide, but you're basically right on this corner of the 18 yard box. The four and the five central defenders have to come up. Um, and the reason they have to do that is because if this ball gets lost here, if uh, we play a ball in and um, you know the, the defenders recover it, we have to be able to stop transition quickly. We can't be way back here with our four and a five and they have the entire um, field. If that happens, we want our four and our five to stay put and to slow them down um, or to just go win the ball back. Um, what we don't want is if that happens that our four and our five center backs just race back here. We need to stay and keep this distance pretty much how I, how I see it here. All right, so 
This is, again, our starting positions on our corner kicks. So the outside midfielder uh, who's taking the corner kick will simply tap the ball over to the six. Now, after he does that, the outside midfielder has to go around the outside this way. Okay, He can't just come in here because if the ball gets played to him, he's likely to, going to be off sides. All right? He's got to come around this way. Um, so you will see he's starting to do that. The six, uh, and I'm going to add defenders here in a second, but the six is going to be encouraged to take their space and to, to really put pressure, either, either going 1v1 against a defender um, or uh, play, uh, dribbling it in here and, and, and getting a cross off. Um, the three and the nine have designated spots that they are supposed to go to. Okay, So the outside midfielder on the opposite side always goes far post. Okay, They will make a run to the far post, and the far post is the post furthest away from the corner, so in this area. The nine, our striker, will always go to the penalty spot. Okay, Always. So these are, these are um, pre-designed runs that they will make. So we'll just play this out. You can see that the six is, is starting to come into the box. Um, the three is going towards the far post. The nine is going towards the penalty area. And the two is kind of coming around. Now, the two will be an option as well. If, you get, if the defenders start coming, which you know, typically they do, and the two makes a run up in here, you can, we can play that ball into the two for a shot. The two could, could easily slide it into the nine. For, for a one touch. Um, there's a lot of options in here, but um, I wanna make sure that if you're the six, you take your space and engage defenders. Um, sometimes what I've seen happen early on in the season, um, as we've done this before, is the six gets the ball and just immediately plays it out to the two before defenders have even engaged him. And we don't want that. We want the, you to bring the defenders in so it opens up space. So in this scenario, we play the ball into the nine, who, play, who I don't have him shooting, but obviously gets it played in there. Okay, so let's go ahead and add defenders, and this is this is probably what it's going to look like. Um, it, it, most good teams will play it like this. Um, they will have their outside midfielder on this side um, playing the short corner. They they should have their two center backs kind of tucked in here, um, one marking the nine. The six may be just right up in here, kind of looking at this middle area, and their outside midfielder on the other side should be marking our outside midfielder. The other side. Now, this 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 often doesn't happen, and and, and the defenders um, are, are less organized than this. But I wanted to show this against a more organized um, um, corner uh, defense because the good teams uh, eventually, um, as we as we progress, will do this. So this is what it looks like with defenders. You can see that again, it, the ball is played immediately to the six. The two runs over. Uh, remember, the nine is going to the penalty spot, and the three is going to the far post. And as you can see here. Um, what's happened is this has forced the two to make a decision. He either has to come with R2 or he has to come and engage here. Now, most um, defenders our age will not have the discipline to stay with the two, so it likely will come here. So you, 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 what will happen many times is the five and the two from the defenders come in and, and close this off, and a simple ball here to the two is on, and the two can either dribble in and get a, take a shot, um, or, or the two can play that cross into the nine or the three. But in this situation, um, I, I've just go out, gone ahead and said that the two stays with, with R2. So now we have a 1v1 situation, and this is exactly what we want. We want our central midfielder 1v1 with the five. And so there's several options here. Um, R6 is, is absolutely welcome to go 1v1, try to beat this guy. Um, or if this is on, go ahead and play a cross in here. And you will see that I just say it's on, cross gets played, and boom, we score. So... Um, that, again, is how we set up for all of our corners. And um, I just want to one more time go over the outside midfielder takes the corner, plays it short into our six, makes a run over the top, okay? The nine goes to the penalty spot, and the outside midfielder on the opposite side goes to the far post. Um, now what I want to do is talk about a situation where we actually will play a ball in on a corner. So if... If um, they play two guys out here, and the good teams, if they're going to do this, will bring their nine, who, who typically would sit up here looking for a rebound and a counter, will bring their nine down. So you will see two people in here. Um, and they might do that, especially if we start, um, especially if we're very successful on our corners, on short corners, they might start doing that. If they do that, 
that is going to be our trigger to play it into the box. So if that happens, what we want to see is our six will come over and stand right here um, in front of the nine. And the six will make a near post run. Okay, so, so a couple things to discuss here. If, um, if the nine or the two comes with, that's fine. We're just going to play it out. Okay, and there'll be a lot more um, complexities to this where if, if that were to happen and the nine comes over, we bring the four over. But I'm not going to get into any of that today. This is simple, um, simple corner kicks. So if this happens, that's fine. If the two comes or the nine comes and it's just one guy out here, that's fine. The one thing I want to say is the six, when they make a near post run, the run has to be an angled run. So I don't want a straight line to the far the, the near post. We want to take an angled run. All right, we want to come down here, then come over. All right, because a lot of times this near post run uh, could be a knockdown play, um, or if it comes in, you're going to want to be at this kind of an angle because the ball actually might come come in on the ground. Um, the nine and the three do nothing different. The nine goes to the to the um, penalty spot, and the three goes to the far post. So let me just play that out for what what this would look like. And if you're the two here, you have to take a couple steps back and really try to get it in the air which I know can be challenging at our age, but try to play a lofted ball that lands somewhere in the box in front of the goalie. Um, or if you're going to, or, or play, if you're playing near post, play, play it in front of the goalie here. What we don't want is a ball that just goes right to the hands of the keeper. So I'm going to go ahead and play this out. You can see the nine, and I have this arrow here, the nine goes to the penalty spot, but I want you to look at the six. The six is making an angled run. You see how he turns there, all right? Um, nine still at the penalty spot. Three is still at the far post. And you can see we go in. So, guys, if you have any questions on that, please feel free to let me know in training. Um, or if you're just watching this on YouTube, um, go ahead and feel free to have questions in the comment section. Uh, really appreciate the support. Um, and this is kind of, like I said, how we're going to approach our corner kicks at the uh, 7v7 level uh, this season. Thanks a lot.